It's been five months since Asian short-clawed otters Wallace and Annie became parents for the first time. After a tough start in life, the runt of their litter, Bo, has battled his way to a full recovery. He's definitely come on leaps and bounds. That's it. Bo is now a lot more confident and he's making sure he gets the food that he needs. Can't really tell which one he is now because he's almost the same size as his brothers and sisters. I think the turning point was when he just started getting um, a bit more pushy for food. When the other pups learned to swim, Bo had been too weak to join in. But now he's getting private lessons from his doting dad. Wallace, he's been very supportive of Bo. He's maybe giving him a, a bit more of his time and making a special effort to help him progress. And these days, Mum Annie is also taking a full part in parenting duties. Now Annie's not constantly feeding the pups. She has a bit more energy um, to put into the parenting side to help Wallace out. She still has fun with her pebbles, though. It's really, really nice that they've all made it, but especially him. He's, he's a little bit special. One of Chester's most devoted couples are Wallace and Annie, the zoo's only breeding pair of Asian short-clawed otters. Annie and Wallace have been together for a couple of years now, and it is sweet because they pair for life and they seem to really get on with each other. They're a cute couple. Wallace and Annie share common interests. Their passion for fish and their love of juggling stones, which are great for playing practical jokes on their neighbours, like banging on their front door. They're not the best of friends with the Babarusa. And, of course, there's blocking up their water drinkers, too. It's an ongoing thing. They can be a bit trying at times. Asian short-clawed otters are vulnerable in the wild, but Wallace and Annie have been doing their bit to save the species. Annie and Wallace live in a massive family group. It's the biggest group we've had. They've had three litters and now have eight children all living together in one chaotic household. With so many kids to supervise, Annie relies on Wallace's support. With short clawed otters, the dad plays a vital role in raising the pups. His job is to protect her. He also gives up his food first, so he'll make sure his family are fed first and then he'll feed last. Super Dad Wallace even keeps the kids entertained so Annie can occasionally put her paws up. Often you'll see Annie out on the water stuffing her face and he's playing with the pups. But this afternoon, as the kids play in the pool, Wallace isn't joining in. Him. Straight away, he's the slower one. And he's shivering. When I first saw him, I instantly thought it looked stomach related because he wasn't eating and he was all like lethargic and sleepy on the paddock. I can't stress enough how greedy otters are. They eat 20% of their body weight in food every day. So the fact that he's not eating is is a massive concern. Obviously a big concern if any of our animals get sick. But Wallace is our breeding male. He's a vital part of that family. So yeah, it, it is a, a big worry. It's a new day at Chester. And male otter Wallace has recovered enough from his anaesthetic to return to his family. He's still got pebbles in his stomach, but the vets have decided against surgery for now. It is a massive relief that we haven't had to do an invasive procedure. We haven't had to operate on him. 
It would have been a massive deal for him. But the blood test results are back, and they've identified what was making him sick. Wallace has an infection, which will need to be treated with antibiotics. Good boy. He's OK. It's important he rejoins the group as soon as possible. Hello. Is he back? Hey. They were really happy to see him, and he was very happy to be back with his family. But giving an otter medicine is never easy. Wallace! Getting antibiotics into him is a challenge. He's not stupid. He knows that I'm <laughs> trying to give him something probably that doesn't taste very nice. What I was trying to do is feed the nine, get them out of the way, and then feed him last. He's trying to target just Wallace. All is not well at the giant otter habitat. Ikana's daughter, Runa, is still at the vets. Keeper, Kieran, has remained with Diego and Ikana to monitor them, as Ikana seems to have become very distressed by Runa's absence. They want to know where she is and is she safe? Particularly Ikana as a mum, she's wondering, where's my daughter? She just wants to look after her and be a mum. Due to the fact that Diego and Ikana have yet to bond as a breeding couple, Ikana is very much on her own. Upon arrival at the vets, Runa's blood is taken for testing and she is given an external examination. By taking a sample of the fluid in Runa's abdomen, the vets will be able to see if her low red blood cell count has been caused by internal bleeding. I suspect her liver is completely shot and that she's had a catastrophe. I think that makes a decision, yeah. yeah. Is it hey, Gabby? Is that? I think it's time. When Runa went away, it was expected she was going to come back. Every animal death hits the team hard. You know, we build up such a relationship with them. We're not meant to have favourites, but we do. And for some people on the team, Runa was a favourite. And it's difficult, but it's the best decision. She's not suffering anymore. And we can't focus about us, we can't focus about how we're feeling. It's how do we deal with Diego and Akana? It's 4 p.m. and feeding time for the giant otters. <laughs> She's very, very, very noisy. Chris has been taking care of them for the past year. Sisters Maxa and Runa live with their mother, Ikana. Ikana is quite uh, dominant for feeding. If she gets a chance to have all the food, she will get all the food. Max is very outgoing, very in your face, brash, will scream a lot. Whereas Runa is very, very cautious about stuff. And she sometimes misses out on a little bit of food here and there. That's it, now I'm done. You've got three bits. Yeah, you're gonna have some. It's not my fault, is it? Done now. You've had it all. Ah. The pup's father, Chingu, fell ill and passed away in their enclosure. Since then, the sisters have united to support their mother. He died two or three years ago, and one of the, one of the pups did 
did try and bring him some food to try and feed him, which is quite an interesting emotion for an otter. You've got to have strong family, strong, strong bonds. Otherwise, you wouldn't survive in the wild, basically.